gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. Thank you very much. You're watching Swipe coming up on the show this week. Rise of the soft machines. Is this the future of robotics? Kid stuff. We meet the next generation of engineers getting their experience in early. Plus, it's business time. We send the Sims to work in our games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe. It's the Easter holidays and we're at a children's robotics camp. Now, I know what you're thinking. We've been a little bit obsessed with robotics recently here on Swipe, but it's not without good reason. You've all heard stories about how one day robots might rule the world. And there's a whole area of robotics we haven't even told you about. Soft robotics. Never heard of it? Here's Stuart. For the uninitiated, this is a good introduction to soft robotics. Baymax from Disney's Oscar-winning film Big Hero 6 has machinery on the inside but is inflatable on the outside. Professor Chris Atkinson and his team at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh helped the filmmakers ensure their movie was based on real technology. What we're worried about is getting close to people and touching them. Uh, if you want to comb someone's hair or brush their teeth, you really want a, a robot that's not going to hurt them, even if the computer crashes. So for me, soft robotics is building computers that are inherently safe, even if they have a computer crash. You might think Baymax looks far-fetched, but this kind of tech is being developed in real life right now. Like traditional machines, soft robots are durable and relatively expendable. But this technology takes inspiration from nature, using materials which have strength but won't necessarily damage what they come into contact with. Experts say there are many potential uses. One of the things that you might want to do with, with soft robotics is to use them in medical applications. So for things where you're moving inside the body, where you have forceps, for example, and you're moving tissues apart, or somewhere where you're using a machine in an unstable environment, so say it's in a kind of rubble-type environment, say after an earthquake or a disaster zone, then by having a, a machine that is soft, that can gently move in the environment and interact with the environment safely, um, then you can remove some of the control elements that you need for conventional hard robotic systems. They could also be used domestically, helping people with restricted movement to wash, eat or fetch things, for example. But perhaps, most importantly, they could change how we feel about interacting closely with machines. It's about showing that robots aren't necessarily these kind of scary, hard machines, and it's moving robots into something um, where people will be interested in interacting with them, they'll feel safe interacting with them. Later this month, industry experts will gather at the world's first soft robotics week in Tuscany, Italy, They'll be discussing how they can make sure these prototypes evolve into the future of robotics. Stuart Duggan, Sky News. Well, all engineers have to start somewhere, and here they're learning the basics of robotics using Lego. And over here you can meet Saul. Hello, Saul. Nice to meet Hello. you. Can I shake this hand? Yeah. I'm sure you didn't make it to do that. It's yeah. very clever looking. How long did that take to make? Um, it took me two and a half hours in the morning. Does it move? Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. And what is it you like about building things so Um, much? I like that you can just like, let your imagination loose and build whatever you want, whenever you want. Kind of. Fantastic. Yeah. And listening over here is one of your teachers, Simon. Now, when you were young, did you start getting into, into engineering like this? I started very young, all the way through um, wooden blocks, then into normal Lego, and then moving on to stuff like Kinex and Meccano, and then all the way into a degree in engineering. One thing that strikes me though, there aren't many girls here, are there? It's a bit of a boys thing, would you agree? Yes, on my degree in engineering, I found that there are only a few girls in a class of a few hundred, but there are high-earning female engineers out there. They just don't get as much press as the men. Plenty of them, indeed. Now, Sol, what do you want to go on to do with this project now? Do you want to make a whole robot out of it? I probably, I was thinking of doing that, but I don't really think I have enough pieces. You're watching Swipe, still to come on the show. Acceptable in the 80s. 
some platform-based retro fun in our games review. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. Had a go on Google Maps Pac-Man, I couldn't get Stuart off it. Users have been able to transform maps of real streets into playable zones styled on the popular 1980s arcade game. When the update launched a few days ago, Google said it would only be around for a little while. It was still there when we filmed this, so happy chomping while you can. NASA's been continuing its mission to find new ways to land on Mars by spin-testing one of its spacecrafts in the lab this week, ahead of a test flight in June. The low-density supersonic decelerator, a.k.a. LDSD, is a bit of a cross between a balloon and a flying saucer. It's intended to better handle the tricky atmosphere on the red planet. A new health tracking project in the US is aiming to test the DNA of thousands of people by using Facebook. The team behind Genes for Good is hoping volunteers will use a special Facebook app to answer questions and send a sample of their spit to a laboratory at the University of Michigan. The project is to help scientists learn more about genes and disease. Jay-Z launched his new music streaming service this week. Madonna, Beyonce and Alicia Keys are among the A-listers who co-own the venture called Tidal. It's meant to give artists more control over music streaming after many complained they get little in return for the rights to stream their work on sites like Spotify. I think I'll um, stick to Google Maps Pac-Man. Speaking of video games, here's Guy Cocker with some of the latest releases. Uh, Ride is a new game from the Italian developers Milestone and they have a lot of form in making motorbike games. They made the MotoGP series for a few years back and this is their attempt to try and make a motorbike version of Gran Turismo. So if you play Gran Turismo you'll know that it's a very serious racing sim. It's all about buying, in, in that case, cars and upgrading them and taking them around some of the most beautiful tracks in the world. And that's very much the same for Ride but on two wheels. So you start your racing career, you buy the bikes, you have to tweak them and the handling is very very realistic now there's different levels of realism that you can adjust but even on the most sort of basic novice difficulty level I was struggling to get into the game and actually sort of ride particularly while I was falling off all the time so if you like that sort of simulation aspect of uh, motorbike racing then this is the game for you now, Get to Work brings uh, some of the most popular elements of gameplay from previous uh, versions of The Sims, which are jobs, uh, back into, into The Sims. It's an expansion pack, so you have to buy it, but it brings that, that gameplay that a lot of fans liked back to the series. So you essentially get a sim, you choose a job, you can be a doctor, you can be an, inve a, a pro an investigator uh, or a scientist. And you, depending on what career path you take, if you're the detective, for example, you start off doing simple jobs and supporting the other detectives with paperwork, and then you get to start to investigate your own cases and uh, interrogate the perps and do all that sort of stuff. And if you're a scientist, you get to start doing experiments and uh, doing even right up to the point where you're investigating other alien planets. So they have quite a lot of fun with this idea of careers. It's got that sort of Sims element of, um, uh, of humour to it. So uh, while it's good, it's not an essential expansion pack. It really just brings The Sims 4 to where probably fans expected it to be in the first place. Axiom Verge, like so many other games from indie developers, is a take on the classic Metroid-style gameplay. Now, Metroid was a massive hit for Nintendo back in the 80s, and there have been many other variations on Metroid in, uh, in the past. But this looks very much like an 80s-style game, right down to the simple 8-bit sort of blocky graphics and the chiptune soundtrack. But it's very much an homage to that Metroid-style gameplay. So you start off, you're a scientist, you get sucked into this alien world. You start off with a simple weapon, and then you pick up a drill, and then you pick up an, uh, another weapon that allows you to corrupt and decorrupt the game world. And the idea is that you explore this alien world, and then use these weapons to investigate areas that you'd already been to, and then open up new areas. Um, that's very much a sort of, from a game design perspective, what Metroid did so well. And this game very much follows that Metroid, um, that Metroid style gameplay. If I have any complaints about it, and this might be from a PlayStation 4 owner who's, you know, spent £300, £350 on a console that can produce lifelike graphics is why you would maybe buy a game that looks like it could have been made about 20 years ago. But if you're a massive fan of Metroid-style games and 80s-style classic platforming and shooting, then actually this is probably one of the best examples. Well, that's it for this week. But don't forget, you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com, and our YouTube playlist. See you again next week. Bye-bye.
Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.